Hello and welcome to the Lens at 177 and today uh, we are having another discussion and um, seated opposite me is the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister responsible for our coffers, uh, Minister for Finance, uh, Professor Biman Prasad. Welcome to Lens at 177 one again, sir. Uh, to start off, we have just come out of celebrating another Gilmit anniversary under the coalition government. Uh, how, how did you assess the celebrations uh, last weekend? Well, uh, Anish, if I can uh, go back uh, Last year was a historical year for Fiji. The coalition government uh, restored the Ratusukuna uh, holiday, but made a historical decision, first time ever in the history of 145 years of Indo-Fijian community here, that Girmit Day will be recognized as a national holiday and it will be commemorated to remember our forefathers uh, and their descendants and everybody else. Uh, and that was a very historical decision. Now, when that was done, it was kind of a slap in the face of the uh, Fiji First Party and some of the others, mm -hmm. you know, like Mahendra Chaudhary, because, uh, you know, they chose not to participate in it and make a big deal of the expenses that the government had allocated. Mm. But they didn't realize, and this is exactly what they, uh, they did this time. When they saw that the Girmit commemoration was a huge success, we had the Indian uh, State Minister for External Affairs, uh, governor, Lieutenant Governor of Lakshadweep, a very strong mm. Indian representation. We had one of the most successful international, intellectually driven mm. conference which brought people from all over the world, including our diaspora countries, which put Fiji on the map for the first time as a Girmitia country, as a country where the contribution of the Indo-Fijian people and their ancestors is being recognized as a national holiday and the, the activities and the commemoration, the events funded by the government. Now, they could not digest that because all, so people like Mahendra Chaudhary, Albik Maharaj, uh, Koya and all these others are saying, what is there to celebrate? Nobody is talking about celebration. Mm. I don't know, you know, suddenly they, they, they seem to be against this, this uh, Gilmit commemoration. The idea, I mean, when, when people come to uh, Gilmit Center as they did in the last three uh, days, there were all these, you know, uh, uh, exhibitions, uh, history, uh, language, clothes, jewelry, young kids going around and enjoying the sight of what was there. Because under Fiji Fest, under Sayyid Kayum, Ayaz Sayyid Kayum and his minions who are talking about it now, they deliberately, and they, they forgot that before the election, they went around running uh, around the country asking town councils to organize uh, a Girmit um, commemoration. And, and now, because we have done such a fantastic job as a government in making sure that it is not only a national holiday, that in a transparent, accountable way we have allocated the budget. So let me just uh, tell the people of this country the kind of hypocrisy. Look at this. Rinesh Sharma, MP, Fiji First, says coalition government has approved 500,000 for the Girmit Day celebrations. Don't know whether he's talking about last year or this year. So this is what they do in, in social media. And he says, then Mahendra Chaudhary goes on uh, Fiji Village and says, oh, uh, there is no accountability in the, in the budget. Let me tell Mahendra Chaudhary that he is the last man in this country who should talk about transparency and accountability. This is coming from a man who was hiding more than $2 million in Australia. This is a man who claimed that that money was given to him to settle in Australia. He is still in Fiji. If I give you money to settle in uh, Bua and you don't go there, what, what should you do? Return the money to me. 
And he's talking about the $500,000 budget. Let me explain this. And this is what we've been saying to the media as well. The budget was 500000 Total actual expenditure was, that was spent on Girmit commemoration in 2023 was $380,308.76. I'll give you this, Anis. Out of that $380,308.76, $125,000 came from sponsorship. Government fund that was utilized was $255,308.76. The Global Girmit Institute and the conference expenses of $200,000 was determined as part of the total budget. An agreement vetted by the Solicitor General, signed by the Permanent Secretary, laid down very clearly how the fund was going to be used and it was one of the most successful conference organized and we gave it to uh, Ganesh Chan who was the Girmit and I know why Mayan Chaudhary was going to town because he doesn't like Ganesh Chan they were part of the Labour Party Ganesh moved out of him because he, he realized what this man was mm -hmm. so he was going after him then Apart from the, some deranged, uh, you know, lunatics on, on Facebook and other places uh, claiming that I'd given money to my wife, who happened to be a trustee of the organization uh, many years ago, didn't realize that every single cent, and we made sure because we knew that people like Mandra Chaudhary and others in Fiji First will we made sure that every single cent was accounted, audited. Uh, you know, when the Auditor General's come, uh, report comes out for any ministry, like any other expenses, mm -hmm. Mahendra Chaudhary can go and, you know, spend his nights and days, you know, uh, scrutinizing that. But this is exactly what, this is what they did about the uh, economic summit, mm -hmm. where we said, we have a budget. When you plan an activity, an issue, you have a budget. You know, you say this will come from, when we do a national budget, we say this comes from this revenue, this comes from uh, tax, this comes from borrowing, this is the total budget for the year, mm. for the program, for the activity. But they knew that, they knew that, but they, they are deliberately, they're still trying to make this thing, oh, you know, uh, government is using a lot of money. We allocated 500,000 for Ratu Sukuna Day as well. They also had a, you know, a conference. There are you know, papers, uh, intellectual rigor. So I want to say to people like Alvik Maharaj, uh, people like uh, Fayaz uh, Koya, uh, Rene Sharma, and all those who are out there criticizing these Girmit uh, divas, actually they are worried. And I know why they're doing it, Anish. I know why they're doing it, because this is what they did for the last 15 years. This, they played on the fears of the Indo-Fijian community. I was in, eight, in Parliament eight years. The moment I talked about working together with our Itoke leaders, the moment I would, I would, you know, they would accuse me of, of uh, you know, being against the Indo-Fijian community. Mm -hmm. Now, they, they, they realize, you know, it's such a fantastic program, and they can't digest the fact that a large majority of the Indo-Fijian population in this country and our Itoke community appreciate the fact that this government has not only declared it a public holiday, but is actually putting money into the activities. So last year, it was 380,000 as I gave you the exact figure. This year we had allocated 230,000, 230,000 for the total, for the entire uh, budget. 30,000 of that would go to, has already gone to some, you know, quick renovation in anticipation of the program, and the other 200,000, uh, and of course they would have got a lot of support and sponsors as well. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, and, and I will give this to you uh, for your in information, uh, uh, Anish. So that you know the likes of Mahendra Chaudhary, uh, you know, um, can can see how transparent and accountable we were, you know, in terms of the expenditure last year and expenditure this year. Mm. 
and, and, and for them uh, to, to drag my wife into it and, and say that, you know, I gave money to her and some, you know, deranged brokers, uh, you know, who know this themselves. I mean, this is what we call the, the height of political immorality, thuggery uh, and, and desperation on the part of uh, those, you know, uh, who, who say this. Mm. So, uh, so why don't you consider or have you considered or Mrs. Chan has con considered taking legal action against those who are we, defaming? We, uh, we will, we will, we will. Uh, it, it's coming mm. because th th we, we, have, we have collected uh, a lot of the materials and, and we will do that. Okay. Much of the criticism this year during Gilmit was uh, targeted at you and Honorable Sashi Kiran. Yeah. Both of you come from NFP. W yeah. Why do you think you were targeted and Honorable Sashi Kiran only? Because as I said, uh, Anish, these people, you look at the Fiji first behavior, Hayaz's behavior in parliament for the last 80 years. You look at uh, mm -hmm. when, when I used to speak in parliament, uh, even now, you know, Asnir Sudhakar made this public that there was a special instruction from Ayaz that when Bivan Prasad stands up, everybody should make noise and don't let him speak. Because they didn't want the, the Indo-Fijian people in this country to think that Bivan Prasad is a leader of repute. So, you know, put all the mud, uh, you know, say whatever lies you can to make me an Honorable Sachi Kiran, because they know Honorable Sachi Kiran is a very popular uh, MP. Uh, she's out there, you know, uh, she's done a fantastic job in organizing the event last year, this year. Uh, she's out there helping people. And they, all they're worried about, Anish, is their votes. So people like Rene Sharma, I mean, this man is a Johnny come lately, but he is exactly you know, portraying the traits of his master, who is still their master, not in parliament, but still their master. This is what they're trying to do. And I think our people have actually understood. They know, they tell me when I, when I go to uh, the different area district, they tell me, say, you know, why are these people swearing at you? I said, that's a blessing, you know, these are, people who can't come out openly. But these are people who lie in parliament. So what people like Rinesh Sharma do, they pick up these things. They come to parliament and say, oh, we heard this. So in parliament, they lie and get away. But today, he's gone beyond, uh, you know, the lying. And I'll give you an example of his lies. And, uh, and uh, the, the uh, the criminal, criminality of what he did and what he said, you know, uh, towards the end. DPM Prasad will take a break and we will start the second segment with that topic that we have just mentioned about uh, Honorable Rinesh Sarma. Yeah. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back and uh, DPN Prasad, you were mentioning about uh, Honorable Rinesh Sharma. There was a incident that has been reported overseas. He has made a comment uh, to Australian media in relation to an alleged stabbing of a Australian tourist mm. and has tied his uh, this incident to uh, cost of living in the country. I understand you have taken offence to that and uh, you are taking this matter further up. Well, uh, uh, Anish, I don't take offence to uh, what these uh, people say uh, because I know they lie. But if it comes from uh, people on the social media, if it comes from anonymous, uh, you know, bloggers and, you know, faceless, uh, you know, um, people on the, on the Facebook. That's understandable. You know, I'm used to that. You know, they swear at me every day, uh, say all kinds of lies. But coming from a member of parliament, such as Rinesh Sharma, who fancies himself to be, you know, somebody who knows a lot of the issues, uses this incident 
And lucky enough, it was the media, because he deliberately chose not to talk to the local media, because he would have known that the media would have asked him a question, why, did you, why, why are you saying this? So this is an article in, in a, a news media in Australia, Aussie men's family reveal cost of Fiji already nightmare. And in that article, it's reported, Fijian MP Rene Sharma used Mr. Brett's case to highlight what we describe as heightened crime rates due to cost of living hikes. He's further quoted to be saying, while we urge the Fiji police force to increase the presence in towns and cities and communities, we urge every Fijian to take caution in public spaces and secure the promises, he said. Similar story was reported in the Daily Mail. Same thing. Now, Anish, this is coming from a member of parliament. This is coming from a person who needs to understand that we are working very hard as a government. The, the first ever record numbers was in 2023. Mm. The numbers are still holding up. Tourism Fiji, Fiji Airways, uh, Minister of Tourism, the whole government is trying to promote tourism uh, and Fiji as a, as a safe, mm. as an important a holiday destination. And here is a member of parliament, he's going to the extent of saying, take caution in public spaces, secure your promises. Now, what would a tourist reading uh, this in Australia say? What would our people who are living there? And I know why they want to do this. You know, he's, he's forgotten because he was lying in parliament, getting away with it. Now he went outside and lied to the foreign media hoping that we will not pick it up. But he doesn't realize that he is actually committed a crime and he should be investigated. In our view, he's committed a crime under his own master's law. Public Order Act 17.1, any person who by words either spoken or intended to be read or by science or by visible representation or otherwise, for, amongst other things, undermine or sabotage or attempt to undermine or sabotage the economy or financial integrity of Fiji. This is exactly what Rene Sharma has done. He, he is so engrossed in making Fiji look bad, making the government look bad, that he's forgotten that he's damaging the prospects of the lives of people who are working there. Many young people working in tourism industry. Fiji Airways, the whole country is looking at tourism as the, as the driver of our economy. And here is a, a member of parliament going out to the overseas media and lying and creating and inciting for people not to come. I mean, if you are sitting in, in Melbourne or, um, or Sydney or somewhere contemplating a holiday in Fiji and you read this article, what did you say, Anis? <laughs> you probably think twice. Already we had Australian numbers go down a little bit because of uh, inflation and other things, interest rate hikes in Australia and the uh, you know, impact on the disposable income. And here comes this man who should be saying, you know, and he didn't know that this man did not come to the hospital, was self-inflicted, and he's tying it to the crime and, and not only saying it in a measured way. If it is said, oh, it could be, uh, he could be a victim of crime or something, they would have fine. But for him to go and say, while we urge Fiji police force to increase the present down in Sydney, we urge every Fijian to take caution in public places and secure the premises. Mm -hmm. Now that's almost saying that, no, not almost, he's saying that Fiji is unsafe. Mm -hmm. So do you intend or have you reported him to authorities? Well, I'm sure that the police uh, will listen to this interview. Uh, we have the uh, printout of the news media. We will be forwarding it to the police and uh, uh, he should be investigated because we don't want people to go and lie about the country, lie about the economy and scare away. You can lie about few things about the economy which they do, about cost of living, about prices. Mm. But when you say 
to the overseas media mm. that you do not go into public spaces, that you secure your homes. What are you saying? Mm. This is criminal. Mm. Uh, let me ask you this question uh, on the uh, imprisonment of uh, the Fiji, Fiji First Party leader last week. Has or will the Fiji First Party lose his charisma coming 2026 elections? Because everybody knows he will not be there to lead the party. Well, uh, Anish, uh, the fact that they lost the election uh, last year, they might say, you know, they still, and of course they, they won the election, two elections. I don't think uh, they had won the election in 2018. If we, if we uh, you know, had gone through a, a proper process of uh, elections and campaign and all the draconian rules that they had uh, in 2022 and all the attack on leaders like ourselves, they still lost. So um, I don't think uh, it will matter who remains uh, Fiji First leader. Uh, the fact is that the Fiji Fest is going to be history in the next election and the sooner uh, some, some people realize that, the better it is for the country and I am pretty certain uh, that it doesn't matter who is the leader of the Fiji Fest, uh, Fiji Fest will be history in the next election. Mm -hmm. Former Attorney General and uh, former Secretary of Fiji Fest uh, came out also firing last week mm -hmm. uh, questioning amongst other things, governance of the country. Uh, did you listen to that uh, press conference? I mean, and uh, Ayaz is the last person to talk about governance. Ayaz is the last person to talk about how to manage an economy. Uh, this is a man who is not even in parliament, who is not even uh, the general secretary. And he, and he made a, uh, you know, as I said, he was revealing about his own uh, weakness in the constitution. What kind of constitution was he talking about? You have a constitution where only three people can be leaders. You have a constitution where you don't have, for eight years, for nine years you don't have an AGM, there is no committee. And I feel very uh, sorry for the Honorable Leader of the Opposition, my good friend, uh, Honorable Inia Seruratu. Uh, he is a gentleman. I think uh, if there is any uh, body who, who will have respect left uh, in the next election, uh, it will be Honorable Inia Seruratu and, and I'm happy to say that the government is happy to work with him. But look at the insult that Ayah Sayyid Kayum threw at Honorable Inia Seruratu. He is the leader of the opposition. Vijay Narayan is reported on, on uh, Fiji Village saying very clearly that Honorable Inia Seruratu was not given permission uh, to, to join the discussion on Girmit. And I'm sure Honorable Ina Saruratu would have done a very good job because he understands, you know, he, 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 he's a man with, with uh, a lot of it. Because I know him. When I was in opposition, we, we could talk to him. Now, Ayah Sayyid Kayum uh, is doing a disservice, not only uh, to himself, to the country, but to his Fiji First Party and to his MPs by fronting up from nowhere mm -hmm. And going like he's still, uh, you know, control of the party and going on a tangent, uh, explaining things which doesn't make sense. How can you make sense of a constitution that this man designed for his own party? Mm -hmm. How can you make sense? So my advice to Ayaz would be, uh, you know, save your integrity a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if there is anything left about how you manage a political party, how you manage the economy uh, by not opening his mouth and attacking every uh, Tom, Dick and Harry that he can attack in a, in a, in a press conference. He's a journalist uh, in a free media environment. I would love to moderate a debate between you or Mr. Chaudhary, you or Mr. Sayed Kayu. Would you accept? I've okay. never shied away uh, from debate with Ayaz or anybody. Um, you know, because I have not come into politics uh, to look after my interest, to further my, you know, personal ambition. I came into politics to fight for democracy. I came into politics to fight corruption. I came into politics to uh, promote good governance. And I, my record is very clear. I opposed the 2006 coup. I opposed the 2000 coup when Chaudhary was taken out, I opposed the 87 coup. 
And Aya Sayyid Qayyum, you know, ran away after 87. And he's talking about, you know, uh, so what they're trying to do, uh, Anish, all these people uh, in, in Fiji first, especially our Indo-Fijian MPs, is to attack me because they think that, you know, by attacking Biman Prasad, mm. by demonizing him, by saying, you know, he's, he's sold himself or something, that, uh, you know, and, and Mahendra Choudhury is like that too. Because whenever you talk about working with Ethiopian leaders, talking about unity, talking about the country, there will be politicians like Ayaz and Choudhury and others who think that, okay, you know, demonize him, and then the Indo-Fijian voters will, I think the Indo-Fijian voters have become much more smarter. Uh, they, they will not buy this nonsense from Chaudhary or Yaz or anybody uh, within Fiji Fest. We'll take a short break and uh, after the break we'll talk about the upcoming budget that you're supposed to deliver. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back and Deputy Prime Minister Professor Biman Prasad is with us on the Lens at 177. In the final segment, uh, Mr. Prasad, let's talk about your budget that's coming up. Mm. Uh, with the budget mm. preparation currently, you have the National Development mm. Plan being revised. So are you gelling uh, the two together to produce the new budget that you will deliver? Uh, precisely, Anish. In fact, we are doing a new National Development Plan. It's not a revision of, mm. it wasn't a plan, uh, what there was there. So what we've done is we have uh, taken a very considered view of what a national development plan should look like. We've also realized that you know uh, there are short term, medium term, long term. So it's a three year, five year and 20 year development plan. And uh, as you heard me speak before, um, the three year plan is getting back to the basics. And there will be uh, a lot of uh, you know um, uh, announcements and provisions in the budget looking at the basics of improving our roads, our water supply, our drainage, our health. And people have to realize, I mean, people say, why you talk about the previous government, uh, you, you were in government for 15 months. But look at the health facilities. And it's we, for eight years, we talked about an inquiry into the health system. We moved a motion for an inquiry into drug problem, inquiry into the sugar industry. The Fiji Fest government was not interested. So what we were handed with, and this is what people need to understand. Now we are in 15 months. If you look at the improvement in some of the health centers, hospitals, uh, you look at the sugar industry. You know where you know government came in. You know uh, incentivized the farmers. We put in another eight million dollars. We we had to bring back some economic sense in our in our budget formulation, mm -hmm. and not the budo economics that Ayaz used to practice. Uh, you know keep borrowing keep spending uh, and then you know uh, when a disaster hit you know we were we were we were almost zero uh, in 2019 the economy uh, had a negative growth the economy contracted because in 2018 before the election mm -hmm. they went on a rampage or, or spending borrowing and spending because they wanted to be popular and to win the election uh, and, but immediately after that you know while they were hiding at level 9 you know, the confidence in the country just went uh, down and the 2019, the economy contracted. And then when COVID came in, we had the fourth largest contraction of all the economies in the world because of what was happening in 2019. So my first job as Minister of Finance and as, as a coalition government, our job was to stabilize our finances. We looked at the tax, we looked at the expenditure, we made sure that we bring all that back together. And we did very successfully. We, uh, I think it's gone down very well with the people. There are issues about, you know, 9 to 15 percent VAT. Uh, people have forgotten that um, uh, Fiji First and Baini Marama government had a single rate VAT of 15 percent. Mm. Then they moved to 9 percent. Then they brought three, zero, uh, nine, and 15. So what we came, what we did is we 
streamlined it because there was a lot of uh, revenue losses, administratively cumbersome. We zeroed it to two, uh, kept the basic food items zero, uh, added medicine, uh, and then you know we uh, increased the nine to fifteen percent. But while we did that, while we raised some revenue, we also raised company tax, we raised departure tax. So people are forgetting that you know. Uh, corporate organizations were also paying more tax. We didn't raise the personal income tax because we realized that disposable income was important. Therefore, whatever revenue we got, we used that to help our people, especially those in the lower income level. And almost 100 million, uh, you know, given to uh, back to school support, more than 220,000 students mm. in the last, uh, you know, two school beginning uh, uh, terms have been helped. We increase the social welfare, we increase subsidies, we put m more money into the pockets of the sugarcane farmers, subsidies for ag agriculture, non-sugar crop farmers. Now all that is showing a lot of fruits. Now you can see the people's interest in agriculture. I was told this last night uh, by someone from Banu Alevu that suddenly there is this air of confidence. Uh, that the drainage will be fixed, that you know the prices are reasonable. Mm. We increased the uh, price of rice as well because we realized that farmers needed the incentive. So a lot of things have happened. There is a lot of confidence in the, in the uh, tourism industry. The numbers are just holding up and we expect uh, to, to go up. There are challenges about labor market. People are leaving, uh, skills. These are issues that uh, will affect you know, uh, uh, some uh, growth and, and we are prepared for that. Uh, but we are also trying very hard to do that. So that was the last budget. This budget, I have said very clearly, uh, Nish, that there will be no surprises. We've already foreshadowed what we intend to do. For example, you know, we talked about dividend tax in the last budget. We are discussing that. Uh, we had this 3% uh, on manufacturers. We had a lot of representations, complaints. We are looking at that. But no changes to personal uh, income tax uh, or uh, bellwether tax or any other uh, tax that uh, we because we want to give consistency stability of policy you know Ayaz talks about economic policy stability you go and look at what he did in eight years one day this another day this and you know his policies his tax policies were based on uh, the, the submission that his cronies were making I mean the the backdating of uh, uh, capital gains tax was a good example so we are not doing that, and, and I'm, I'm happy to say to the people of this country, mm. and as I said at the Fiji Institute of Accountants, that I didn't become the Minister of Finance to, uh, to be popular everywhere. I became the Minister of Finance to sort out our economy, to bring stability, to set the country on a path of you know, sustainable debt, which we've done. I mean, people like Premla Kumar, you know, doesn't understand the difference between debt to GDP ratio and nominal debt. And debt to GDP ratio is what is the key indicator, is going to go down to around 79% by the end of um, uh, July. But of course, you know, our, our, I mean, she doesn't understand that we had a deficit budget. Mm -hmm. Deficit budget means and is you borrow that debt amount. So obviously, government will have to borrow, but over a period of time, the amount of borrowing that we would need will decline. Uh, we can't just do it overnight because there's so much that uh, government has to do uh, to provide uh, services to our people in terms of infrastructure, which was in a state of disrepair. Mm. So that is, the, the, uh, in a nutshell, what people can expect in the next budget. Of course, we are discussing a number of other measures. Uh, we've had people talk about elements of uh, price gouging. Uh, you know, people have complained about prices. And uh, unlike, you know, the lies that we had from Honorable Usumate in Parliament about all the prices going up, I produced a list from, a list from FCCC which said that quite a few prices have gone down. Uh, somebody from the opposition said there's massive unemployment. Uh, they don't know the meaning of massive employment. In fact, employment, um, uh, labor market is very strong, you know, in the formal sector. Because people have been leaving and because the tourism sector is booming, uh, there's been an increase in the formal sector wages and salaries. So uh, I think the opposition uh, is, is just, they haven't got away from the fact that they are not in government, that they are in opposition. 
that they that they need to be a little bit honest and come with with facts and figures as we used to do when we were in opposition mm. uh, but i don't see that uh, coming from the opposition mm. all you hear is the stories of uh, what people have told them and then uh, you come to parliament and lie and of course you know rene sharma is a prime example of that and now he's going and lying outside mm. There's this issue of the national minimum wage. Uh, the union body FUC has called for six dollars per hour. Yeah. Do you agree with that benchmark, or are you going to announce something that will lead in staggers towards six dollars per uh, hour? That's a very good question, and, and and I've always been a believer of uh, a national minimum wage, a living wage. Uh, of course, you know we said that uh, in 2014 uh, we were not in government in 2014, nor were we government in 2018. Now we are in government. Uh, I have announced that in the budget uh, last year that minimum wages will be removed, uh, reviewed. It's being done, and we will make sure that uh, all the views are considered carefully, including the views of the employers and the unions. And of course, the government will do its own assessment as to where we are in terms of the economy, how it's going to impact. The wages and salaries and business. So, uh, in any case, uh, any, any tax policy, any wage policy, uh, will always have, uh, you know, supporters and those who may not like it. There'll always be in a tax policy winners and losers. So uh, you can never make everybody happy. But what I would do as Minister of Finance uh, is to make sure that whatever policies we put in place is well thought out. It's not about me or the coalition government or the partners in the in the government winning the next election. It's about, and we've done that in the last budget, uh, despite you know all the um, uh, lies that uh, the opposition has been telling. Uh, I think the people are understanding that, and uh, contrary to you know some of these uh, uh, Facebook and other mm -hmm. anonymous uh, Fiji First uh, uh, type uh, you know supporters, when you go down to the people, the people actually understand uh, what we were uh, landed with, what we are faced with, and what we have done in 15 months to address some of the fundamental issues. Not everything has, has been done properly. Uh, not everything has been uh, uh, achieved. And, and, and you can't in 14 months, given what we inherited. So uh, all I can say to the people of this country is as Minister of Finance, uh, as um, uh, government, uh, as the Prime Minister has said uh, on his recent tour, uh, that you know the coalition government is progressing well uh, there will be uh, bumps there will be challenges there, there are issues that uh, people will complain but the most important thing Anish you are a seasoned journalist because you understand this better and, and there are a few others like Vijay Narayan and Fred Wesley and, and a few others of how much things have changed the, the value of freedom the value of media you know, walking into the Minister of Finance uh, room and asking questions, uh, you know, itself has inspired a lot of confidence. People feel very good. I mean, uh, you know, telling uh, the government off, you know, okay, you know, you guys uh, need to uh, do this. You know, you are not doing that. Mm -hmm. And that itself, as I said, even if uh, a lot of people don't agree with the government's approach, one thing everybody will have to agree. One thing everybody will have to agree is there is now an air of freedom. There is now uh, a media which is able to uh, hold the government to account, which is able to write uh, aspects of uh, negativity about the government. Uh, and you have a government that takes it with um, the view that these are you know, criticisms that we cannot just write it off. Sometimes we don't like, you know, what the media might say, certain media, but that's all right. Uh, and I hope that, that uh, you know, over time, a lot of the, the younger journalists and those who uh, grew up in the 15 years of dictatorship would actually value uh, the freedom that we now have uh, for the media and that's good for the country that's good for the institutions that's good for the economy and that's good for the uh, country and our international image deputy prime minister professor Vinod prasad thank you for speaking to me thank you